Hi there, this is Miss Caitlin from Fibo Kids Art Academy and welcome back to another amazing art class. Today we are going to continue our fall tradition series and revisit the country of Thailand from around the world. Now in Thailand, during the fall, there is a festival that happens called Loi Kertong. Now what this festival is, is it is a way to honor the goddess of water by floating these little rafts with, made out of leaves and flowers down the river. It's also a way to ask for forgiveness for any you know, pollution from the water and a form of respect to be thankful for the abundance of water that she provides every year. Now we have a couple of things that we need for this project. First, we're gonna need some chalk pastels color pencils, you're also going to need a glue stick or just some sort of glue, scissors, eraser, pencil. Now not pictured here are the papers that you're going to need. Now on our final paper, you're going to need maybe a dark colored paper to kind of show the water during the night because this festival happens during the nighttime. You're also going to need some construction paper of different colors so that you can cut out the different parts of our little raft that we're gonna make to float down the river. Now, I have a bunch of scraps here too. I encourage you to use any little scraps that you have um, just so that we don't waste paper. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna begin with a practice draw just so we can understand our composition a little bit better because we are gonna be working with kind of almost a little bit of uh, these different organic shapes. So we kinda wanna know what we're gonna be up to before we start cutting things out. Now, for your practice draw, you can use any kind of paper, scratch paper, construction paper, something that you can feel free to maybe try out the shapes on confidently. Now, you're gonna see me use a Sharpie for the practice draw, but I want you to use your pencil. I'm just gonna use a Sharpie so that you can see my lines a little better. Now, to begin with, for these little cups, these little rafts that float down the river, um, they can be made out of just leaves or they can be in the shape of lotus flowers. Oftentimes they usually literally are flowers, things that are biodegradable because you don't want to float anything down the river and ask for forgiveness for polluting the river by polluting it more. So all these rafts, these little cups that are made, they're all biodegradable so that way they don't harm the river. Now for us today, for this lotus flower that we're going to create, I want you to turn your paper up and down so that it's vertical and go towards the bottom of your paper and I want you to draw a horizontal line. You want it to be pretty long, about this size. It takes up a good chunk there of the paper. All right, now we're gonna be drawing two layers of lotus flowers. Now, if that's gonna be a little tricky for you today, you could also try and plan for making maybe just one lotus flower instead. But I'm gonna show you how to be making this one here, okay? So you can see that we have these lines that curve up on both sides for the first chunk of the lotus flower. So I want you to go on either side. You're gonna draw a curved line up and a curved line up, okay? Now if at any point you need to just pause the video so that way you can feel comfortable going at your own pace, you can go ahead and do that. Next, we're gonna draw a short curved line in a short curved line in. And then we're going to draw almost like a very curved mountain shape. So curved line up, curved line down. And that will be our first part of the lotus flower. Next, we're gonna draw that second part of the lotus flower. It's almost like they're stacked on top of each other. So we're gonna go kind of towards the inside, right about here. And I want you to draw a curved line up and a curved line up. And then it's the same steps from when we just did this big lotus flower. You're going to draw a curved line in, curved line in, curved line up, curved line down. So now you have this layer of lotus flowers. All right, next we're going to go ahead and draw the leaves that the lotus flowers are also floating on. Um, this way, they'll have a little bit more buoyancy. So I want you to go onto the sides here of the lotus flower on the bottom. I want you to draw a short diagonal line out on either side. Okay? Now you can choose either to draw your leaves curved or you can make them more pointy. I'm going to go for the leaves that I made on the example here, but you can do just ovals if that's easier for you. So I'm gonna draw diagonal line in, diagonal line in, and then I'm just gonna draw 
these shapes until I meet the other side. Now you don't want to do too many because remember when we go on to our final draw and our color, we're going to have to cut out a lot of these shapes so we don't want to, you know, try and practice doing too many. We just want to do enough. Alrighty. Next, we're gonna plan in where we want this candle to be. Now, inside these little rafts, these little boats, you'll often see like little incense sticks or candles, something that kind of lights the way for this little raft to go down the river. It's very picturesque if you look up pictures of this festival, it's really pretty. So on the top of the lotus flower, I want you to draw two lines up and then a curved line because of course when the candle burns, it's going to not only um, melt some of the wax, but they're circular. So we wanna make sure we're drawing a curved line to show the circular nature of the, uh, or cylindrical nature of the candle. Not circular, cylindrical. Last but not least, the flame for the candle. Now at the top here, it's gonna be sort of like a teardrop shape. So try your best to draw that there. It almost looks like a birthday cake right now, but it's gonna look more like a raft once we're done with it. Now that's all we're gonna do for the practice draw. I want us now to go ahead and move on into our final draw and coloring. Now the final draw and coloring are kind of combined today because we're cutting out a lot of the big shapes. So go ahead and just set this off to the side so at least you'll have it near you as a reference. I'm gonna go ahead and set mine over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and have my other papers ready. So I have my nice new dark paper ready. This is gonna be my background. Um, I would encourage you to have this paper nearby. I also want you now to go and find papers for your first layer of the lotus flower and your second layer. For me, I'm gonna be using a red paper today for my first layer, and then I'm gonna use an orange color for the second layer. So again, I'm going off of this example here. Now again, if this is gonna be a little tricky for you, you can feel free just to do the one layer of the lotus flower, okay? So maybe you just pick your favorite color that you'd like. Okay, so once you have those papers ready, I'm gonna go ahead and just set this one off to the side. You can have it nearby, but just so that you don't get confused, I'm gonna move it. And on these papers here, I'm gonna draw our lotus flower that we practiced. Let's start with the one for the bottom, the big lotus flower that's gonna be resting in the water with the leaves. I'm gonna draw in Sharpie just so that you can see. So again, this is kind of our final draw and our final color combined. Okay, so I'm gonna use the flat part of the paper as that horizontal line that we made. Um, I would encourage you to maybe also find maybe a flat edge of your paper so that way you don't have to draw it in, it's just already there. So if this is going to be the flat line I'll draw it in for you just so that you can see what I'm doing of the lotus flower. I'm gonna go ahead and draw in those curved lines. So remember, start from one side, curved line up, go to the other, curved line up. Then you're gonna draw that curved line in, curved line in, curved line up, curved line down. Okay. And now you get to cut that shape out. Now we're gonna be cutting out a lot of different shapes today, so I encourage you to maybe just have a little space somewhere on your desk or wherever you're creating your project today that you can keep all of our shapes and separate it out from the rest of your scrap paper. I'm gonna just cut out the rest of this flower here so it's a little easier for me to kind of have a handle on it. So I'm gonna set any extra scrap paper off to the side, that way I don't get confused. And then I'll cut out my lotus flower. There we go. Now this festival has been celebrated in Thailand for thousands of years, it's a very old, old festival. Now, when I was doing my research on this festival, because of course I'm not from Thailand, so I've never celebrated it before. It seems like there's a couple other stories that go along with it. If you were a part of our Around the World series, you would have learned that Thailand, most people there are Buddhist. 
And so there are some um, traditional stories or some stories about Buddha that go along with this festival as well, besides for the goddess of water. I'm gonna take these scrap papers and also set these off to the side somewhere because those ones I can't really use for anything else, but I'll keep them off to the side. Now, once you have your lotus flower cut out, remember we wanna separate this from any scrap papers and any papers we're trying to throw away. So I'm just gonna set this up here so I know I have it ready. If you are doing the second layer like I am, go ahead and take out your second piece of paper for the smaller lotus flower. Now we want this one to of course be smaller than the one that we just made. So when you go to draw it, don't make it too, too small, but just keep in your mind like I need this to be smaller than this guy right here. If it helps, you can kind of plan out, like take a look at it here. You can put it up to your paper. And then remember, we kind of wanted to start right about here and here. You can draw a curved line up, curved line up. And that way, at least you can start it with your pencil. Just to make it easy on myself, I'm gonna connect that with the U shape so it'll be easier to cut out. From here, do the steps that we did in our practice draw, where it's curved line in, curved line in, curved line up, curved line down. And then you can go ahead and cut this lotus flower out. All right. So like many festivals, that happen around this time. This festival is on a specific day, but the day doesn't match that of the international calendar that we use. So Loi Kratong happens on the night of the full moon of the 12th lunar month from the traditional Thai calendar, lunar calendar that is. So lunar calendars, many different places use lunar calendars to keep track of, you know, different events and months and how they, you know, kind of kept track of time in the past, or at least the passage of time in the past. A lot of those things still hold true today. In fact, you probably know of other countries and other festivals that use the lunar calendar. All right, there's our second lotus flower. So we can double check it and see if it'll work well by putting it behind our big one here. That'll look great, I think, don't you? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set these again up in my little pile of things that I need. And I'm gonna go ahead and take out a green piece of paper. And this is gonna be for our leaves that are on the bottom. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my lotus flower from before. And remember, we wanted those leaves to kind of come out from the sides of the lotus flower. So that way it looks like it's floating. So I'm gonna put my lotus flower onto the green paper just kind of to plan out, you know, how big do I want things to be. Take your pencil, I'm gonna use my Sharpie. I'm gonna draw, just like we did in the practice draw, diagonal line out, diagonal line out. I didn't glue down this lotus flower, I just have it there so I can kind of see for myself where I need things to be. Now holding it down, I'm gonna draw in my leaves. So this way, I know how big to make them. And that way they don't all get bunched up towards the lotus flower. I can double check and make sure that I'm leaving space. You can feel free to just draw a horizontal line across here, and then you have a shape to cut out. So go ahead and finish that up. And you can cut out the shape of your leaves. Now I'm just going to quickly cut this out here so I don't have all this extra green paper hanging around. And I'll cut out the leaf shape. Now everybody works at their own pace when they're cutting out papers. So don't feel pressured to go as fast as I am. You can pause the video, take your time. Now as we work around these very jagged zigzag leaves. I find myself always slowing down because this part's a little tricky and it can be. So just take your time, go at your own pace. There's no rush. All right, there we go. Cutting just around that little spot there. Good. 
All right. Now, at the same time this festival happens, in other parts of Thailand, but specifically in the north, there is another festival that's similar that happens. But instead of floating lanterns and little boats of, you know, rafts made out of leaves and flowers down a river, they actually put uh, lanterns up into the sky. It reminds me very much of the scene in Rapunzel, where they, or Entangled, I should say, where they light the lanterns up into the sky to call her home, or just to remember, you know, the princess. Now, I'm not sure that that's what <laughs> the festival in Northern Thailand does uh, for that specific, or they do that for that specific reason, but it just reminds me of it because it's very much a similar look. All right, so now we have all the different pieces of our lotus flower, our little boats to float down the river coming together. So what we can do now is we can take out our piece of paper here, and let's just double check that everything is gonna fit. All right, so I'm gonna put, remember we want the leaves down here. We want the lotus flower to be towards the bottom, and this one will go behind. So we're just planning, we're not gluing anything down yet. Now if you find your first lotus flower is maybe a little big, mine I think is a little big towards the bottom, very carefully you can take your scissors and just carefully cut off a little bit of the bottom. You can toss this in the recycling. Let's double check it. Okay, I think that'll work a little bit better. Just need a little bit cut off towards the bottom. Now we need to go ahead and also cut out the candle that's gonna go in the center of this. So let's go ahead and find a paper for our candle to be. I'm gonna choose this color. It's kind of like a cream or a tan. And I'm just gonna take my scissors. If you want, you could even draw this, but you just need a small rectangular shape. So first draw that small rectangular shape. Doesn't need to be anything too crazy. So something like that. And then you can just cut this out. Put this paper off to the side. And then remember, candles are cylindrical. So you're going to take your scissors and just cut out a little U shape from one side. So it looks like that. And then let's go ahead and stick that behind and see how that's going to fit. That looks good. Just going to do some adjusting here, move a couple things down. All right. Now, of course, we need the flame of the candle. Now, I actually want this to be white because I want it to be very bright. You can choose really any color that's going to make sense for a candle for you. I have this white scrap paper that I'm going to use to just draw that teardrop shape for the candle. So you can go ahead and take your paper for your candle, draw in that teardrop shape. I'm going to draw mine there. Cut this extra paper off. And then I'll carefully just cut this out. Okay. There we go. And then I'll stick that here and see how it looks. All right, it's coming together. Now there's a couple more things that we're gonna cut out. This is our main composition. So if this is all that you wanted to do and you wanted to start gluing it down, great. But I think we can make this look a little bit more interesting. So from here, I'm going to start cutting out little flowers to put on my lotus flower as well. So that way it looks really intricate and pretty. Now you don't have to do this part. Maybe you wanna add different kinds of shapes there. That's totally fine. This is your little raft that you get to float down the river. So you can kind of design it how you would like it to be. For me, I'm gonna be cutting out these simple flower shapes out of a pink color. But again, you can use any color you want. Again, I have this pink scrap paper here. You can take your pencil and draw your shape. Now I'm gonna draw three. We need three of the shapes. And to draw the flowers that I was going to make, I'm just gonna do a curve, 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 five times. So it looks like this. You can see there's almost a big one here before. I'll do that three times. Okay, almost 
there and done. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out. Just set that off to the side. I'm gonna just cut off some of that extra paper to make it easier for them to cut around. Now, when you have something that's very small and intricate like this, it can sometimes be tricky to cut out these tiny little curved lines, and that's okay. Especially during this part when we're doing tiny little detailed things, just take your time, go at your own pace. Okay, there we go. Now, for this project, I'm not going to show you this, but if you wanted to make your project even more glowing and sparkling, whatever you'd like to do, you could take little stick-on gems for this project and at the very end stick them on to wherever you like. But that's up to you. You don't have to do that. Now, a really big important thing about this festival is um, thinking about how to use water responsibly, right? So a great deal, maybe you can afford like a lot of praise to the goddess of water for always giving you water, clean water, and just allowing you to have an abundance of it because a long time ago, a lot of towns and uh, cities and villages would center around rivers as a source of water and just of life. But we can also do our part. So for this fall tradition, it might be good to think about what does responsible water use look like for you. Now, depending on where you live, that might be something different. Some places have lots of water because you just happen to live in a, you know, maybe a rainforest or a tropical area, or you live in a place that just has lots of green plants, or you live in a place with evergreen trees. And so that's itself a different kind of tropical forest, but, um, Water usage for you might look a little bit different than say, somebody who lives in the deserts of Arizona or Mexico or you know the deserts of Egypt. So for someplace like a desert, water of course is very important. If you have no water, there's no way that you can live in the desert because it's dry and there's just not much there. I know, I lived in the desert for most of my life. Water was very important. So responsible water use in the desert looked like, you know, maybe not having a lawn. You wouldn't have grass in the front of your yard. You might have desert landscaping. So you would have cactus or cacti and rocks and have a lot of desert native plants, or at least plants that are native to the desert that you live in. But maybe for some place like um, Washington State, where it rains all the time, you've just got water to spare. You have so much of it that maybe you know having a green grass in the front of your lawn doesn't impact you as much or impact the environment as much. There's also responsible water use that you can think about inside your home like taking short showers or, you know, making sure you're not running the sink while you're brushing your teeth. Only use the water that you need. All right, so I've got my tiny little flowers cut out here and I think you can go ahead and start thinking about gluing things down. Now, if you would like to, there is another part that I included, which are these little incense sticks. And of course, these aren't real incense sticks. These are just pieces of paper, but these ones are a little tricky to glue down. So I'll show you how to do that at the end. Um, but if you wanna make these, you can just cut out really thin strips of brown paper and then we'll glue them behind or above the flowers. So this next part, we're gonna have to be pretty careful with how we glue everything down. I'll call this the final color because it's going on to the paper finally. So I'm gonna carefully just remove my lotus flowers and we're gonna start with the leaves. Because the leaves, if we were creating this in real life, with actual leaves and actual flowers, we would start with the base, right? So go ahead and take your leaf base, put some glue on it, 
and this has to go towards the bottom of your paper. Again, put it close towards the bottom. Make sure it's centered. There we go. All right, next will be our big lotus flower. So you're gonna take your big lotus flower, you're gonna put some glue on the back, and that's gonna go down next. Okay, if you only did the first layer, if you only did one layer, then this will be, you know, your biggest step. Okay, let's go ahead and put that here. I'm going to move it down slightly. I want it to definitely kind of go on top of the leaves a little bit. And then just kind of press that down. You don't need to tap it, just hold it down for a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to actually pull up the leaves here because remember, we have another flower that has to go behind. So this next part, we're going to do it very quick. We're going to have to put this lotus flower behind here before our glue dries. So if you did the second layer of the lotus flower, go ahead and quickly put some glue on that. Take it, stick it behind and then you can press down. Okay, last tricky part, the candle. So what you can do, you can, well, let's put some glue on the bottom here of our candle. And up to the top. Then very carefully pull up the lotus flower stick the candle behind, and then you can press everything down. Just hold it down. And there we have it. Now we can put down the other stuff really easily. So I'm gonna do my candle flame next. Put some glue on that, stick it here. Do the flowers next and stick those on to the lotus. There we go. Next one. Okay, that's two and last one. And three. All right. So there we have it. We have everything all glued down. Again, if you're doing the incense sticks, you can do those at the very, very end. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our color pencils and we're going to add some details to the main part down here on the flower. So go ahead and take out your color pencils. If you don't have color pencils, that's okay. Maybe you can use crayon or something that you'd like to draw on the flowers with. I also have a sharpener and a paper plate off to the side here, just so that I can sharpen the pencils as I work. All right, so I'm gonna begin going from bottom to the top. I'm gonna to start with the leaves. I'm gonna take out a dark green color pencil and I'm just gonna add some lines on the leaves so that they look like leaves you would see in real life. And I might even add in, you know, some diagonal lines here and there to make them, again, just more like leaves you would see. Now these leaves might traditionally be, you know, banana leaves. Sometimes the cup itself that you would float down the river would be that of a coconut, like, you know, the half of a coconut, which is really cool, because they float, of course. Now I'm also gonna take this pencil, you could even do this in a dark blue, and I am going to just add a little bit of shading underneath the flower and onto the leaves, just so that it helps it stand out a little more and it doesn't look so flat. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and work on this big lotus flower area, starting with the little guys here. 
I am going to use probably a purple or a red. I'm gonna actually go with the purple color here. And I'm gonna draw centers on all of the flowers. Now let's see, can you see that? You can't. I'm gonna go ahead and use the dark blue, just so that you can see. A little better, there we go. All right, if you'd like, you can also divide the petals. I'm drawing curved lines to each of those little corners that I made. You don't have to do this part. You can absolutely leave the shape as is, but if you want to be super detailed, this is what you can do. Okay. Now, if you want to go even a step further, you can add a little bit of shading on the inside part around the centers. I know that might be a little tricky for you to see, so I'm just going to darken that up for you. Just so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to continue doing that onto all of the centers of the flowers. We have a lot of bright colors happening right now. Now for the centers of the flowers, because we're using color pencils, I'm actually going to use a yellow and it'll still show up pretty well on your picture. because It'll stand out from that pink paper. It's kind of like if we were going to be drawing with color pencil on toned paper, it usually makes the color stand out a lot. Just like that. Now on the red lotus flower here, we're gonna go ahead and take a dark color. I recommend a dark purple, a blue. You could even use a brown for this part. And I just wanna, you know, make it a little bit fancy. I'm going to add, can you see that? A little difficult for you to see it. I'll switch to a different color. I'll use the brown in this case. Go. Sharpen it a little bit. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of do a little outline around the top of the flower, just so it stands out. We're working around the top here. And continuing on. So I'll show you what it looks like on our final here. You can kind of see this blue area, and then we're also going to add white, but we'll do white at the very end. All right, so you can continue that onto the sides if you'd like. It's really up to you. And lastly, you're going to add it to the bottom of the flower here. just so that it doesn't look so flat. Okay. Next, we're gonna go ahead and work on the orange flower. I'm going to use a red for the details that we're gonna add. So we're thinking analogous colors, colors that are close by each other on the color wheel for this part. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna add that color along the edges of the flower just so that it stands out. And then if you'd like, you may add a little bit of shading in these little corners where the lotus flower starts to peek out from the other one. Just again, so that it looks a little bit more three-dimensional and not so totally flat. Okay. Now, the last step is going to be using our color pencil. Well, not the last step of the project, but the last step with our color pencil is going to be to add in lines for the water and add in any little highlights. Now, because our paper is very dark, we wanna use very light colors so that they can stand out. I'm gonna be using a white color pencil for this part. Now, let's go ahead and use the white color pencil. Go onto our red flower. We can add in some highlights from the light of the candle onto the very, very edge of the petals. You can also do this on the orange flower. 
or the second layer of the flower that you did. Okay. Now we are gonna go ahead and add in the waves of the water as it's floating down the river. Now, this is important. We wanna think about perspective here. So when things are closer to us in our picture, they're going to appear bigger and just closer on the paper. As we move up to the paper, as we go back into the background, those lines that we make for the waves are going to appear smaller. So we're gonna draw them smaller and higher on our paper. So when they're closer, they're big and they're low. When they're far away, they are going to be high and small. So for the waves of the water, go ahead and begin. Remember you want your biggest waves to be towards you, the artist. You can add as many or as few as you want. I know that it's going to be a little tricky to draw really big lines, especially with our giant little cup here of flowers and leaves as it floats, but just try your best. So we're just adding in the lines right now. Okay, I'm moving back. So now I'm gonna start thinking, all right, I gotta start making these lines a little bit smaller. You can have some of them kind of coming off the sides if you'd like, just to help make it look more natural. All right, we're starting to get really far away. You can feel free to add some of the lines in the center here. If you look at my example, I didn't really, just so that the light from the candle that we're going to do later is like very vibrant, very bright, and has a lot of attention. But you can add it there if you'd like to. Now, as I move farther back, I'm going to start making these lines even smaller and smaller and smaller. So that way they look like they're in perspective. Okay. All right. So now what we are gonna do after we have our waves for the water lines all planned out, you can take your white color pencil and underneath them, you can add just a little bit of color just to help them stand out a little bit, just to show the reflection of the water. Now you can do this in a white. I think the white is standing out very vibrantly here, more so than I've actually applied it onto my paper. You could also do this with a light blue. Again, just taking my white, working around, adding it in. You can keep working until you're satisfied with how you've applied down that color pencil for the water. I'm gonna go ahead and move in with some blue and see how this dark blue looks. I like the way that dark blue looks here. It's pretty bright on this tone paper. You can add this in if you want to add a little bit more color to the water. You can add it into the waves, those little ripples, and help smooth them out. Just remember to keep an eye on how sharp your color pencil is. The sharper your color pencil, the easier it will be to use the side and hold high. Make sure you're pressing light. Now it looks like I'm pressing hard because of how much color I'm getting from the pencil, but I'm actually not. I'm pressing pretty light. It's because again, this pencil, the color is showing up very vibrantly on this dark paper. Try my best to go around the leaf there. And then I'll work my way back for some of these other little waves. So you can kind of see how the white and the blue are blending into one another as I work. This part, you can really fiddle with it and take a lot of time, or you could take no time at all with it. It's really up to you. How detailed do you want to be about the water? Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Now, after we do this step, we're going to go ahead and move into the chalk pastel portion, which is going to make that glow from the candle. Now again, I encourage you to look up some of the pictures of this festival. It's absolutely stunning. It's really, really beautiful to see all these different little um, cups of flowers and leaves just floating down a river. It's really beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and take my color pencils and set them off to the side. I'll toss maybe these 
pencil shavings and this paper plate in a moment. And let's go ahead and get those chalk pastels ready. All right, so these are the chalk pastels I'm using today. Any soft pastel will work. And what we're trying to do is we're gonna make a glow around the candle. Now, I did this in the form of a circle. Um, you could go for just making a general glow around it. But what I did for our example is I actually drew a circle around the candle. Now, again, maybe you're gonna see the whole circle. Maybe you're not gonna see all of it. It just depends on how big your flower, your boat is. Um, for me, I think we're gonna see a majority of the circle, but probably not all of it, and that's okay. We're just gonna take a white chalk pastel right from the beginning, and we're gonna draw a circle. Now, if you are not feeling too confident about going right in with the chalk pastel right away, that is not a problem. Maybe take your pencil and draw in the circle first. But if you're feeling confident, let's take that white chalk pastel and around the candle, draw a circle. You can use the flat part of the tip to do this. Just remember to press light. You can redefine it a little bit and don't blend it away just yet. It's kind of there as a guide right now. All right, so once you have that, we're gonna go ahead and start adding in a little bit more of that white chalk pastel. Now, I'm again gonna use the flat part of the tip, and I'm gonna decide how far out I want the glow to be. Now, you could have a little bit of a glow, you could have a big glow. I'm gonna take my chalk pastel again, draw a curved line up, and a curved line up on either side. Again, almost as if it's like a circle of a glow. Okay? Now you can take your white chalk pastel, put it flat on its side, pinch and pull, and add the chalk pastel into this area that we created, almost like a donut. Now you're not gonna need too, too much. We do want this to be a very vibrant, bright white color. Okay, now don't blend yet. I know, we wanna blend immediately, but don't blend yet. What I want you to do now is again, take that flat part of the tip. This time, you are going to really define. Might have to just press a little bit into the paper. We want this circle, this inner circle, to be super well defined because again, this is like where the light is coming from, where it's showing. You have to make that line pretty big, that's okay. And then you can put your white chalk pastel back. Next, what I want you to do is find a light yellow or a very light color. It can be a cream color, anything like that. I'm actually gonna go in with this color. And take this color and on the outside, add in just some little strokes When you look at light, depending on you know, what kind of light it is, what is being burned, whether it be a candle wick or maybe a campfire, you will see on the outside of the lights, um, maybe it's really, really white, or maybe it's shining a different color. Candle, um, candle light is usually like of an orange or yellowy variety, so we're gonna add that into the glow. Now you're gonna take your finger, and this is gonna be important. I want you to take your finger, just one. I don't want you to blend this inner circle. Instead, from that line, remember when we were redefining that line just a second ago? I want you to just kind of run your finger along the outside of that line you created. So we're not even touching this inner part right here. We're blending over here. It's a little tricky to explain. I hope that made sense, but we're not trying to blend this part of the line. We're trying to blend the inside part of it. And we're not even trying to blend it away. So you're gonna have to be real careful when you do this part. Okay, from here, take your one finger, kind of doing very careful side to side motions. Give that a blend. It's okay if a little bit gets onto your flower, but try your best to stay inside this shape that we made. So now we have this very stylized looking glow to the candle. Now that's actually all you're gonna need your chalk pastel for. If you want the glow to have a bit of a different color, try adding in maybe an orange 
or a yellow orange to the outside part. Just be careful with how much you add. Now we've made a little bit of a mess there and also I have chalk pastel over my hands so I'm just going to clean that off real quick and then I'm going to show you what to do if you wanted to add incense, the little sticks, onto the other parts of your um, boat here, your little raft as it floats down. So let me go ahead and clean off my hands and I'll show you that last little finishing touch if that's something you want to include. Now if you are completely done with your project and this is all you wanted to add, great! I would take this time to go ahead and clean your space. Get all that extra chalk pastel out of here. We do not want to have chalk pastel hanging around our desk. And if you have extra chalk pastel on your piece, take your paper, turn it this way, and tap it off. That way, all the dust doesn't go all the way onto your uh, raft here. All right. All right, my friends. So if you wanted to add in the incense stick so that um, it just smells really nice as the little raft is floating down the river. Grab a brown piece of paper. It can be any brown. I'm going to use this brown scrap paper. I'm going to cut out kind of a little square section here. It doesn't need to be anything too big. And what you're going to do is you are going to take this long piece of brown paper and you're just going to cut very thin strips. You can decide how many you want. I'll show you how to do four of them. Just because that's how many I added in my example. But you could do two. You could just add one. It's really up to you. But again, I'm just going to do four. Now, how long you want these to be is also up to you. So you can have them be short, you can have them be long. Your choice. All right, so first what I want you to do is plan out where you want them to be. I think I want one to be here, here, and then maybe two kind of coming out this way. Now, what I'm going to do is I don't want them to be covering my flowers. That is not the look that I'm going for. So I'm going to cut them down to size. I think I want it to kind of be coming out from right about there. So I'm just going to cut off that extra paper. I'm going to put a little bit of glue onto the end that I want it to stick down. And then I'll just kind of either tuck it underneath the flower or just put it right on top there. So that way it kind of sticks out. And I'll do that for all of the different sticks. So I'll kind of plan, I want it to be there, maybe a little shorter. I'll cut off any extra. I don't want. Put some glue on the end. And then either try to tuck it underneath the lotus flower or stick it just about on top. And I'll decide, okay, I think I want my other two to kind of be coming out from that little crevice right there. So I'll cut off any extra again. Put some glue. And if I can't tuck it underneath, I'll just put it on top. There we go. Same thing, I'll kind of look. I think I want that to be a little shorter, right about where my thumb is. I'll cut there. Put some glue. And then try to tuck it underneath or paste it on top. And there we have it. That's the completed project. Now again, this was pretty messy, so just make sure that you clean your space after you're done creating this project. Dump away any extra little pieces of paper if you had um, little scrap papers or things like that into the recycling. Um, otherwise, keep any other papers that you didn't use. Guys, I hope you've had a lot of fun making this project for the Loi Kratong Fest Festival from Thailand. I hope to see you all again very soon and be sure to share your artwork onto our Fibo Village Facebook page. Bye for now, everybody.